Welcome to our next installment of the Andrew Loomis figure drawing for lost worth. In this video, we'll be going over the third chapter, block forms, planes, foreshortening, and lighting. In the text, he talks about creating solid form through arcs and uh, taking the form and chiseling out the forms and there's no right or wrong way to do it. We have to use our instincts as artists to find this and talks about the, the planes and the shadows and the, the lighting. And um, another thing too, that he talks about that's really important as far as drawing and painting is, you know, it, it doesn't have to have a polished look like over rendering. It doesn't matter because when you start over rendering, you, tend to make it look too photorealistic and you lose that that artistic expression and you're just all you are is a copy machine pretty much and he talks about you know the camera can do that drawing however finish is not necessary in art it's interpretation of process of individual conception that is art and that has value if you include all the literal effects and actualities the result will be boring and i totally agree with that all right, so now we have our schematic set up from what we've learned from our previous videos, eight heads high. And um, we're going to go ahead and block in our bulk forms. We're going to be lay, laying our foundation in for the light and shadow. And just like George Bridgman, you know, he talks about two tones. You have your light, half tone, and then shadow. So the half tone of shadow are the two tones and the light, there's nothing there. So it's, it's the way of the paper. So let's go ahead and use our artistic instinct to find these bulk forms and to figure out how we can turn a flat shape into something solid looking. Um, what I'm going to do here is start, start this figure here. And by looking at what Andrew Loomis did, I'm going to Block in these forms so it start start like here and then this will be a plane and it's our head that would be our plane then here it's almost like passing, locking, and wedging. To the other side. Excuse the birds. So, so now that I've established that, I'm going to go ahead and put in a tone, a half tone, right there. So as you can see, it's starting to, to bulk out a little bit. Uh, So as you can see, it starts bulking out. And um, I don't go ahead and use this as our shadow. This would be our, our shadow would be the darkest.
Okay, as you see, I've already started um, blocking in my my uh, bulk. And I have two tones. I have my shadow half tone. And light is not a tone because you're using the, the white of the paper. So it's two tones, just like George Bridgman talks about. So here I'm just going to put in like a opening right there. So, it, and now um, here is a tone. This is tone right here. Tone. And then um, we go into the legs. And it, my Andrew Lumis says, use your artistic instinct. So the legs. Okay, so here we established where the highest point is. So this is where the highest point is and everything, everything around it recedes. So we can, um, you can divide that. So here's our shadow. And then here is our half ten. I'm using lines to express the half tone. So it gives it, it gives it shape and form as it recedes. Um, let's do the other side. So establish that, so I'm going to indicate and divide that. Shadow, half tone. Would be half tune. And uh, Andrew Limbs talks about, you know, first you start a block, and then you you chisel out your form, and then you take those that form and you start dividing it into sections. And as you can see with the toes, I chiseled out the big toe and everything else here is flat, but I can go ahead and, and go around and start dividing everything up. And then this would be half tone. to the back um, okay so now I'm going ahead and divide it into twos and then I'm going to 
chisel out the top. So here I have um, two half tones. One going in this direction. This going in this direction. Then we can decide which one is shadow, which one is half tone. So this would be our half tone. And this will be your shadow. And this would be half tone. So the light's coming in this way. continue with uh, the buttocks and again he's talking about using your instinct so I'm, there's like a chisel form coming up here and around that'll be my shadow um, and then this will go around, chisel it. And that would be half tone. Okay, so going off instinct, this is the back of the legs. Okay, so find our highest point. So the highest point will be, we go ahead and put a center line. So these are my arcs and then see my shadow. I have to. That's the peak right there. And then you can divide it. And you can make that the light and then that, this will be half tone. So have our shadow, half tone, light, half tone. So it kind of moves around, you know. So my, my camera accidentally uh, turned off. So here I do with the, the breast, is it comes out, I divided it in half decided where, where is the light and where is the half tone and i decided like the light was going to be here because my half tone is here and if i put two half tones together and it's going to look flat so i put half tone light half tone so as you can see it, even though it's flat and it's looking at you you can tell that it's there's a peak here and it's 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 form is going over and then i started here so let's go ahead and continue We'll continue with the uh, the hips. So I'm going to make my half tone here. 
So it looks like it's coming out. And then as you see, it's kind of like a form. And then um, we'll do our legs. We'll find our midpoint there. So um, our peak, and then and, you know it's like a chisel. It's not smooth. It's like chiseled. But then we can smooth it out later. So the side view. Let's test ourselves, do the side view. So here is our torso. It's the midpoint there. So this would be half tone. This would be shadow. And the breast will be divided here. This is to be our shadow, our half tone. And then um, like divide it like into chunks. So here, we have this mass here, so we can divide it half to And then, so here we'll find our line, our center line, divide that. And we can make this half tone. And shadow. Learning the forms as far as turning into a bulk. Okay, now we're going to learn how to use an art store mannequin. And, um, you know, there's a lot of good mannequins out there that you can buy. And, oh, this is the one I use. Um, I got it online. I, I, I'll, I'll see if I can find the link to where I got this from. But it's small, so you can use your, cat, your phone camera to take pictures. And um, it's got lots of articulation. And... Um, you twist it and so I'm going to be use this for our demonstration
foreshortening. Uh, you can foreshorten any form by drawing intermittent cross sections on and connecting. Andrew is talking about you can foreshorten any form by drawing intermittent cross sections and connecting. Uh, no matter what the form is like, it can be drawn this way. But you must consider the form complete, not just the visible portion. Sense the form all around. The contours pass in front or over one another. You should practice from life or good photos. So let's, uh, let's do a couple, couple of these exercises here. Let's do... Uh, so he's talking about... Um, Cross section. Um, you know, coming out. Um, they're cross sections. Um, let's do. I got a light bulb here. There's my cross section, smaller light bulb. Um, no. It's got this weird thing here. I don't know what it is. It's got the hand, the fingers. I'm sure we're getting into fingers uh, later on. He's got the head, even head. Um, She's got the cross section like this. Like this. So that would be her head. Okay, so now we're going to do some pen sketches uh, for foreshortening, and we're going to take what we learned from the first. Uh, we're going to take what we learned from the foreshortening, and apply it to these pen drawings, and this should be fun. And we're just going to take a look at what Andrew did here, and um, try to apply that foreshortening um, exercise that he um, he taught in the first, the previous page. So. Um, let's go ahead and get into it now. As I'm jumping ahead in pen sketches, farther in the book he talks about pen sketches and how he does his pen sketches. What he does is he gives him a pencil and then he'll make his outline with pencil and then he'll go in with ink and then he'll erase what he needs. So let's go ahead and do that and, and start with the torso. So we're going to start with the torso. And these are cross sections. I have a cross section here, here, 
here, here, here. And so there's our cross sections. I think I have enough information to go in with some pen. So I'm going to be using a uh, micro, micron, uh, number five. Yeah. And that's all the information. And then I'm going around, see my ear. Then I'm going around the face. Going around the form. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase. Go ahead and erase this, see what we got. All right. So he's got a uh, little indication where the nose is. Okay. Uh, here. So my foot looks off. And we can erase this here. Now, there's nothing here because our eye does, even though there's nothing there, our eye perceives that there's something there.
Now we're going to be getting into planes. And what I've done here is what I've done in all the previous videos. Goes all the way back to first chapter. Put together my eight heads high schematic of the male figure. And now we're going to be drawing in the planes. And Andrew is um, talking about uh, planes are the flattening of rounded areas. So instead of having like, you know, round, we kind of angle it off. And then we use the half tone, the shadow, and the light to determine um, where the light hits. So um, I'm on page 76, and you can see that cylinder that he has on the top left page. He demonstrates that in the most precise way. So the lightest part is, is blank because that's the light, and then it recedes. Um, where you have lines, you have thinner lines, and then you have even more thinner lines to create that rounded effect. And then he has uh, one from the top. And um, it, it gives it um, something more pleasing to the eye rather than having a slick or photographic look to it. And he says it should be avoided like the measles. And there's no set rule for the planes. You just draw them as you think best suit the subject. And um, so let's go ahead and draw in our planes. And it's almost like the um, the first chapter we went over, which is um, developing a sense of bulk. And this is part of that, that process. <clears throat> so let's get into, let's start with this middle figure here. So you can see, I just blocked off. So here, turns, turns, turns. You can get really, I mean, it's really detailed here in the face. So here, it tapers right there. So here, it tapers here, and then it goes under, round, under, round, goes around. I don't know if you hear that, there's a curl outside my window. Right, let's do the other side of the arm. So you can see it tapers around. So from my crotch, there's, from the nipple to the crotch. There's the turning. That's a good, uh, good landmark is from the nipples to the crotch. And then you can see how it turns. 
Let me go a little further and go to rib cages. And then this turns here, turns. Uh, let's go these here. And as you can see, um, the toes, you have the big toe, and then you have the rest of the digits in one block, like chiseling it out from, from the outside in, like we talked about in the first chapter of bulk. Okay. All right, let's do the side. So usually when I work on a head, I'll divide it like right there, like that, and then could, that could be that could be a plane. So here it's got plane going back all the way like that. nose then it divides here so it turns here back. Now always remember wherever there's a turning, there's going to be a plane.
So uh, now we're getting into the lighting aspect of the book. And um, we have different lighting setups here. And here he talks about the number one front lighting um, is the flat and unshaded drawing. And it's good for posters, decorative, or simplicity. And then he compares it to here, where it's all flat and you don't see anything. And it's almost like a silhouette. Um, and he's saying the best lighting is a single source light where the light comes down, um, you have shadow, and then you have reflective light coming out from the other side. And um, it's really good, you know, to, um, to use these as reference as far as when you do your planes and then you put in your your uh, your shadows. So I think what I'm going to do for this for this exercise is I'm going to take um, what I did with the planes and add um, a lighting source just to um, kind of educate myself in doing this using a, a photo and then applying it to the drawing with what I think my mind would think would look best. Because remember, he says in the planes, there's no, there's no right or wrong to do it. You do it your own way. And so I'm going to try, try this with um, the third, third top side. And then um, we'll see how successful I get with it. So let's go in, let's get into it.
moving on to the true modeling of the rounded form. And this is the simplest way. Um, and the, this is a, a very important fundamental uh, exercise to learn light and shade, where you have your highlight, half tone, shadow, and then your reflective cat shadow, and then your cast shadow. So I'm going to take what Andrew did in the schematic, and then I'm going to apply it to the to the ball, and then I'm going to apply it to the form. So let's see if I I can be successful in in doing this. But the uh, the lightest area is the A which is the white of the paper. If we move on the surface of the sphere away from the highlight in any direction, we find the light begins uh, to fade into the half tone area. There's two half tones, um, B and B and B plus, and then we have our shadow. So let's start with our half tone or Bs. So the half tone would be, so if we divide it this way, that so the half tones would be like right here that'll be our half tones So let's find the half tones on the figure. So the half tone would be here. Here. So these are the only points where the half tone will come in, but I guess we'll be here. Our half tone, we have a half tone here, half tone here, half tone here. A half tone here. So around here, is our half tone or half tone plus B and B plus. And then we would go into the shadow. Okay, so the shadow, this will be our shadow right here. And this will be our shadow on our ball. shadow there's reflective shadows so this is our reflective right here the reflective on the ball would be here Here is our cast shadow on our ball. Here's our cast shadow on our figure. It's like right here. And then we have a reflective light. I guess the same thing would be down here. Cast shadow, ref reflective light. This would be reflective light. All right, so, yeah.
This is definitely a cash out over here. This is like reflective light. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, so thanks again for watching. And if you like what you see, um, please consider subscribing. I'll leave a comment and, um, it would really be appreciated. And I just, uh, thank you for watching and, um, have a blessed night.